Hi, it's Marie and Mark coming to you from the beautiful Caribbean island of Curacao, and we're going to show you our top beaches for snorkeling. All of the snorkeling here is right from the beach, so no boat ride needed. Playa Puerto Marie is overall my favorite beach. We easily spent half a day there. The infamous pigs greeted us in the parking lot. They were very tame. We got there on a Monday around 10.30 and had no problem getting a good spot in the shade, but it's a super popular beach and got crowded later on. There's a really laid back, friendly vibe, including the people who go there and the people who run the bar restaurant. Porto Marie, this is Fowler Marie. The beach is beautiful with clean white sand and clear blue water. There are comfy beach chairs with umbrellas, full facilities including excellent bathrooms and showers. The snorkeling was excellent for beginners. You can snorkel right off the beach and see fish immediately in shallow water. They have reef balls that attract a wide range of fish. This is the first time I ever snorkeled in the ocean and what an introduction. Now I'm hooked. Other beaches are great for different reasons, but put Playa Puerto Marie at the top of your list. Many people consider Casabao one of the finest beaches on the island. It is a private beach, so it cost us each $3 to enter. There was little to no wave action at Casabao, making it an ideal beach for beginning snorkelers. There were less fish than some of the other places we snorkeled in Curacao. However, I did see an eel, which is something I didn't see anywhere else. Casabao is a good sized white sand beach with full facilities. It's a beach I'd recommend for your first snorkel here on the island. Tugboat Beach is super bohemian and funky. I loved it. And the owner was really awesome and very helpful. It's free to get in. It is hard to find and there aren't any signs on the road, but it is so worth it because the snorkeling is world class and by far the best on the island. But word of warning, and we did a lot of research, but I didn't come across this anywhere. It is a very challenging swim to get there and back. And thank goodness we had good snorkeling equipment, especially fins. There were other swimmers without fins and they struggled. It is an absolutely exceptional coral reef. There are a huge amount of fish and a really cool sunken tugboat. And I have to emphasize the incredible amount of fish. At some points, I was absolutely surrounded by fish. I have to say that this is a life-changing experience and by far the coolest thing that we did in Curacao. I can't recommend Tugboat Beach enough. It was absolutely incredible. Marie and I stayed at the Marriott, so we did spend a lot of time at the Hotel Beach. 
The beach is open to guests of the Marriott and the service was outstanding. These weren't large waves by any means, but the wave action was quite a bit more than any other beaches we visited. The water was initially cloudy, but once you swam out about 20 yards, it cleared up. Underwater at the Marriott Beach alternated between white sand and rocks and coral. The farther I swam out, the more fish I saw. You should be careful about snorkeling too close to some of the rocks around the water. I did that once and got smacked into the rocks by a wave. The beach was least crowded around early afternoon and we found that's when we saw the most fish. If you decide to snorkel beyond the Marriott's rock barrier, you should bring a snorkel flag. We saw many jet skis and boats speeding by back and forth, so you definitely would want to alert them of your presence. If you're not a guest of the Marriott, there is a public beach next door. We didn't snorkel that, but I imagine the snorkeling was similar to the Marriott. Our experience at the hotel was outstanding, so I highly recommend it. Having a reef like this right outside your hotel room door is a big plus. Mambo Beach is a combination beach, dance club, restaurant, and shopping district. We found the shopping to be a bit more reasonably priced than expected and we ate at one restaurant called Pizza Murray and it was excellent. The beach was crowded and they played loud music which gave the whole thing a party atmosphere. This is a man-made beach so they brought in the sand. The sand is great but it's a little bit different than the rest of the sand we found in Curacao. Underwater, the water was very cloudy and you only encountered rocks and coral when you reached the outer edge of the beach area. The snorkeling was a bit murky and we didn't see that many fish. I wouldn't really recommend this if you're interested in just snorkeling. Mambo was fun for the overall experience, but underwater was our least favorite trip. Grote Knip, and it is pronounced Knip, is located on the northwestern part of the island. It took us about 45 minutes to drive there, so it was our furthest drive. It was definitely worth it, though. Grote Knip is known by a few different names, so you should keep that in mind as the street signs tend to use different ones. I saw a fish right when I put my face in the water. That was amazing. Although Grote Knip is a free public beach, they did charge a bit more for the chairs. So you're not going to save a whole lot of money by going here versus a private beach. The water clarity here was excellent and certainly some of the best we encountered. Grote Knip was outstanding and certainly worth the drive. Really the only downside we found is that we arrived right when it opened and we stayed there for a couple hours and the facilities had not yet opened. Do not open your GoPro on the beach. I opened it at Grote Knip and had a couple tiny pieces of sand get in there and it made the unit leak water, so the Grote Knip underwater footage was the last footage we got before the camera broke. So the last two beaches, Jeremy and Lagoon, Marie will be talking about them, and we'll just uh, show some images I took with them. Sorry about that, but if I can give anybody a tip that can save you uh, losing your GoPro, yeah, don't open it up at the beach. Playa Jeremy is a truly local, non-touristy beach. Jeremy is notable for having a manchineel tree 
otherwise known as the world's most dangerous tree. So look out for a round sign with a red on it that says poisonous, but we really had no idea what the manchineal tree is. It's fascinating and worth looking up. Literally, don't stand under it though like we did. There are no facilities at this beach. We literally put our stuff on rocks. There's fairly good snorkeling. It's the best beach by far for sea glass if you collect it. I got some very good pieces of, of sea glass there. It's worth a visit if you're looking for something non-touristy and local. Playa Lagoon is our second favorite place for snorkeling. It's packed with fish. There are seahorses there, spotted eagle rays, turtles. It literally is packed with fish. I liked it because it had a really cool neighborhood party vibe. They were playing salsa music. And the other thing that I didn't see anywhere else on the island were wild iguanas. I spotted one almost immediately on the beach. Also, there are tame iguanas at the restaurant. It's a very small beach though, so not that many people can fit on the beach. So it's probably better if you want guaranteed a spot to get there early. It has an excellent restaurant. You do have to climb up some fairly steep stairs, but the food is excellent and that's where you find the tame iguanas. Well, that's about it for this Curacao snorkeling video. We plan to be back in the future to play a Forte, Jantillo, and a few other beaches we missed. Like and subscribe for more of our travel videos.